not really clear on spotted skunk populations in Tennessee, um, which is part of the aim of this project. Aside from the intrinsic value of just it's an animal that exists on the landscape that's interesting. They are nature's cleanup crew. So they're helping everything that is picking up all of the dead stuff in the woods and they're great rodent control. They exist as a meso predator, so they're not the top of the food chain and they're not the bottom, but they're taking care of that intermediate space that's really important. So we chose Katusa for the pilot project because it's a contiguous block that's pretty large. And the way the initial camera trap sites are chosen is random so that we are not biasing where we think these critters will occur. And wherever we're getting hits on cameras, that's where we're gonna focus our physical trapping. So one unique thing that separates the spotted skunk from the striped skunk is that they can climb trees. So a lot of the den sites that we find are actually up in snags, in addition to their dens and rock shelters and stuff like that that they use. Once we get them out of a trap, we're gonna immediately put our tracking collar on them in case they get away and handling at least we've got tracking on them. We um, give them ear tags, so if they're recaptured, we know which unique skunk that is. We take all the usual measurements, body length, tail length, we take hind foot length, we take weight. Um, we assess reproductive condition. We usually look for any sign of something like distemper or ringworm. Um, and then after that, after they've been worked up, off they go. These um, spotted skunks are almost entirely nocturnal, but we think that understory structure matters a lot because one of their primary predators is the great horned owl. And so if they're out at night, they're gonna want to be hidden. And even though they're, they're black and white and that's a warning to other critters, the owls don't care. So right now, the one we have currently collared is going to be denned up somewhere and then we can go in and just unobtrusively figure out what that den site looks like, what that area around that den site looks like as far as the vegetative conditions and uh, hopefully take all of that data at the end of this and be able to say something about the den sites they're selecting for and where they're occurring on the landscape. We know that range-wide across the eastern U.S., the eastern spotted skunk subspecies has declined like 95% in the past 50 plus years. Um, part of that is due to habitat loss, and we know in Tennessee we've got piles of people moving in here from everywhere else, so we're trying to get a grasp on this and sort of get ahead of what's coming down the pike for losing habitat here in our home state. Mm -hmm.